Welcome to another edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Schein. This is Mark Miller, and we were talking coming in today. The weather has changed. We've played five weeks. Mm -hmm. We're the key part of high school football now. That's right. Now the computer rankings start to mean something. You start to draw a little bit of a picture about who's really in the league races. It's a fun time of year for football. It really is. And you've got your Indian shirt hey, on today for a good sporting reason. It, that's right. They clinched last night. I'm an Indians fan. Lived through a lot of suffering moments when I was a little kid, and now it's pretty, pretty fun times. Although they're going to have no pitchers. So if any pitchers are out there, Go ahead and apply to the Cleveland Indians. You may start a game. All right. We always do a segment entitled uh, Question Mark Segment. Tonight we want to look at something a little bit different mm -hmm. than we have been. And we know that some of our conferences, every school doesn't play every school. Yeah. Now, part of it is the BVC. There are 12 member schools. You mm -hmm. obviously can't play everybody in a 10-game schedule. And the MAC, they mm -hmm. have a 10-game. They could play yeah. if they chose, but they choose not to mm -hmm. for computer point reasons. Yeah, you know, obviously with 12 teams, and they, they were in two divisions last year in the BVC, but so you're not going to be able to play everybody, and so they get on a rotation. Cold, or the, the MAC chose to do that so that they could get more teams in the playoffs. If you think about it, if, if week two you play everybody, everybody in the MAC plays each other, five teams are going to win, five teams are going to lose. But if you play somebody else, theoretically, all 10 teams could win, and that almost happens every year. <laughs> yeah. You told me they went 15 and 5 in the first two five. weeks yep. this year. So that means five of those teams got playoff points that would have lost against a MAC opponent. And so years ago, two, three teams from the MAC would get in the playoffs. Now it's not uncommon at all to see six. This year, right now, seven are in. Yep. And of course, the negative of that is you got to find people who will play yeah. in week two. And as good as you are, sometimes yeah. it's difficult. Yeah, nobody wants to play a MAC team and get waxed, you know, because <laughs> they're, they're, they're smaller divisions typically. But that also gives those two, two games for the MAC at least to go out and schedule up and try to get more computer points because a lot of those schools are small divisions. Coldwater, case in point, they're a larger school in that league, and so they can go out and, and schedule Kenton and Delphus Jefferson, higher divisions. Yeah, and of course, you're going to get them in your building once every other year, which means that's a good gate for you, yep. too, so you'll take yeah. a chance and play somebody like that. Yeah. Okay, if you just want to know this year, Delphus St. John's does not play Marion Local this year, and it does not play Fort Recovery. Coldwater does not play New Bremen, Minster and Parkway do not match up, and St. Henry and Versailles do not match up this year. And one of the maybe negative points toward doing that is, based on the scheduling, uh, like the Big Ten, some years the top couple of teams don't play each other, it's not as good for the league, and you know, is it a real championship or did they back into it? We heard that a couple of years ago yep. with Michigan State and Wisconsin. Okay, let's do our quick review of the games that we had a week ago here. Mark, you wanted to go first. All right, Spencerville 44, Crestview 41. This game was 13 to six at halftime. There were 954 total yards. This is a quarterback's dream to watch and play in this game. Decided by a 25-yard field goal with no time left by Damon Blair. And we got to hear Damon Blair's story that he kicked all winter in the snow. Kicks hundreds of kicks every week. And he is rewarded with a game-winning kick. Spencerville goes to 4-1. Crestview also, but in the league, Spencerville still 2-0. Also in the MAC, we had Coldwater uh, matched up with Sir Henry last week. Coldwater won that game 21-14 continuing their dominance over their rival from just down the road. That's 22 wins in a row now for the Coldwater Cavaliers over the St. Henry Redskins. Toby, a touchdown run, a touchdown pass. He was 10 of 18 for 121 yards. St. Henry had just 212 total yards against that very solid defense of Coldwater that also put a safety on the board late in the game. Next, we're going to look at Lipsick and PG. Lipsick 21, Pandora Gilboa 17, a rivalry game, even though they're four and one and one and four, this is a rivalry kind of thing. Lipsick scored eight points in the fourth quarter to overcome a 17 to 13 deficit. So PG was right there on this one. Quarterback Dylan Schrader, 252 yards passing, two touchdowns and a PAT all to Grant Schrader. And Salina 28, Defiance 20 in Western Buckeye League play. Kevin Klein's doing a really good job at Defiance, getting that program going again. Held him in there once again. Salina, down six, up one, tied at the end of three. A big fourth quarter, 14 to six. Salina comes out with a win. They threw the ball just once in the football game, but rushed it for 321 yards. Good game for the Salina Bulldogs. Keeps them in the league race. We're going to bring come back to them a little later on because they're one of our matchups this week right. we want to talk about as well. All right, let's go into our stat stuff for part of the show then. Mark, who do you start with? All right, USV's Austin Sloan had been injured, not played a lot earlier in the year, but he came on. 
14 carries, 285 yards, and five touchdowns as they beat Waynesfield Goshen. Sloan will really help USV. Trent Heights for Kenton. We've talked about him a little bit this year, but Kenton's kind of flown on the radar a little bit for us this year. Four touchdown passes, a touchdown run. He was 30 of 47 with one interception as Kenton defeated Van Wert 48 to 12. He's got the leading uh, offensive rusher and passer, a uh, combined total offense in the Western Buckeye League this year is Trent Heights. You have to ice that arm down. <laughs> Salina's quarterback, Brent Schwederman, Mark referred to the game. He had 192 yards rushing because they only threw it one time. He did complete that pass, though. And he had two touchdowns in that win over Defiance. Running back Ryan Harder also had 127 yards and two more touchdowns, so they really had the run game going. Spencerville Allen East, the Mustangs with a big win over Bluffton. Uh, Spencer Miller, 9 of 10, throwing the football, 183 yards and a touchdown. He also threw a four touchdown passes, ran for a touchdown. He's completing almost 64% of his passes on the season. 14 touchdowns on the season, three touchdowns rushing on the season. Spencer Miller got it going for Allen East as they defeated Bluffton 40 to 7. And you and I were at uh, Fort Recovery yeah. last week, that nice facility they have down there. They Beautiful. played a MAC game with Minster, mm -hmm. and our plays of this week come from that particular game. We got two. Let's take a look at them. The first one is a pass, Minster on the offense. This is Jared Hulsman, number, number two, throwing to the ball to number 15. That's Jonathan Niemeyer. Now, you're going to see it again here from a different angle. Jonathan had a game. Six catches, 176 yards, two touchdowns. They fake the quarterback draw. They throw it downfield. Double team ball thrown to the inside. Niemeyer splits them, catches the ball, and goes into the end zone. The other one is a run. Number 24, Wes Homan for Fort Recovery. You're going to see it again because if you're like us, you didn't believe it the first time you saw it. Three yard line. They give the ball to Homan. Watch him jump back to avoid the tackle. He jumps back, scoots to the outside, then dips and beats the guy around the corner into the end zone. Wes Homan did that stuff all night long. That was a great high school football game. You know, Mark, let's go back just a little bit because I left something I really wanted to, to focus on a moment ago, and Holman reminded me of that. The Van Lue Wildcats, okay? Now, we don't do a lot of Van Lue here. Mm -hmm. They have a 51-game losing streak in the BVC. Mm -hmm. They play Arcadia. Coach hands the ball to A.J. Reed 59 times, <laughs> 24 times in the fourth quarter, 296 yards, three touchdowns. A.J. Reed scores with, 16, with 18 seconds remaining in the game, and they break their 51-game Losing streak in the BBC. That's got to be some kind of record. That's got to be carries. Something. 59 carries. 59 carries. 24 in the fourth quarter. 296 and three. That's awesome. Good that's for right. him. That's really and good for Van Lue. Yeah, and good for them. That's we right. don't like losing streaks. All right, and uh, let's go on to our uh, bright spot of the week, the Fields of Faith that we had last week down at uh, Wapak, Connecticut. You mm -hmm. and I were both there. Yep. Third year, fourth year. I'm trying to remember uh, exactly how many. I think third, third year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fields of Faith outstanding there. We also had one up in Bluffton on uh, this past Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Fields of Faith have been a really positive thing Fellowship of Christian yeah. Athletes are putting together. Yeah, a student run kind of thing. It started off in Texas in October. We tried October here one year and froze, so we <laughs> moved it up to September. Right. But over the guests, we didn't count them because we don't take tickets or anything, but over 500 youth showed up. And, and it's a neat thing because it's a youth uh, band that plays and, and the high school guys get up and talk. Uh, it is really just operated by the young kids. And then at the end, they get around, a big, do a big circle and hold hands around the football field. And this year, that circle extended from the 20-yard line on one end to the goal line on the other end. I'd like to have an aerial shot of that. What a, what a neat moment. And then they repeated the process up at Bluffton for the first time. This is their first one at Bluffton Salzman Stadium. And uh, just a neat thing they're starting to do all over the country, fields of faith in the fall. I thought one thing that was really interesting at WAPAC, they, they've seen all the students, we had the student band, the student speakers, whatever, and Andy says, okay, how many of you want to take one step of faith and walk across that field? Mm -hmm. And the first kid looks over and says, I will, and the second kid says, I will, yeah. and before long there's 500 people, yeah. all young people going across the field saying, yes, I'll take that step of faith. So really, really an interesting things to see, and we're really pleased to see that going on. Yeah. All right, Mark, how about our where are they now for this week? Hey, we thought we'd look at Andy Dooley. Those of you who might remember Andy as an Elida grad in 1999. He was a basketball and football standout, made all WBL in both sports. Then he went on to Miami on a football scholarship. Didn't go well there for him or didn't like it. He did play some his first year, but he transferred to Wittenberg. Uh, played a little bit of basketball, played some football at Wittenberg, and then after college he decided that he wanted to continue along the Fitness Avenue. Ended up in California, currently lives in in Ventura, California, you're going to see some pictures of Andy. He runs Andy Dooley Fitness. He is also a Christian rap artist. 
He coaches high school football. He mentors young leaders at his church. But the thing he is most noted for recently is he is the 2016 face of Reebok. Yeah, he won a contest, a big deal, and he represents Reebok, and I imagine he wears lots of Reebok clothing. Uh, wife Tiffany, daughters Hope and Sky Lee, very successful in what he does out on the West Coast. And as you can see, Andy looks like he could still play. He is put together, isn't he? He was quite a high school athlete. Yes, he you, was. You saw a lot of them, but they lied on a regular basis. I saw him when we covered him occasionally or played mm -hmm. against him. He was really an athlete. He, he was, uh, in, in football terminology, he was a stud. He's a stud. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Mark. And we like to do those little previews of what's happening with our athletes who have been around in the past. We've got more coming up for you in future episodes of A Closer Look. All right, Mark, it is time now in our last four minutes to look ahead at previewing upcoming mm -hmm. games. We'll start with Macomb and Lipsick, big matchup in the Blanchard Valley Conference. Each team is 4-1, and 3-0. They do it a little bit differently. Um, Arlington was held to just the 31 negative yards last week by McComb. Their defense has been very, very sound. They've given up just 57 points total on the year, has uh, the McComb Panthers. They've also led the conference in scoring. When you think that they've given up 57 points and 36, six of those were to Marion Local, mm -hmm. just 21 points given up total in their four other conference games or uh, four other games. Lipsick, on the other hand, Joe Kirkendall back at Lipsick. They're playing, winning the close games, plus seven over LB plus eight over Hopewell Loudon, plus four over uh, Pandora Gilboa. Big matchup in that conference. Two teams with even records heading into the, the week six. That's going to be a great one. Another great one back in the MAC. Marion Local at Anna. Both of them are four and one, two and one. Anna with the win over Delphi St. John's uh, last weekend, and Marion Local with that loss to Coldwater. They both have to try to keep, keep step with Coldwater if they want to win that league, and certainly this is a game for playoff points. Marion Local. 98 total yards is all they gave for sale. So there's some more defense being played down there. Anna returned an onside kick for a touchdown that sealed the win over Delphus Jeffrey, or St. John's. That was a very, very close game. This is another great Friday night in the MAC on this one. Well, and if you looked at that, Versailles going up to uh, that win over Delphus St. John's, that wasn't picked, or Anna going up, the, no. that wasn't picked to go that no. way. That was a no. big win because yeah. St. John's really had on a roll at that point Kept in time. Kept Anna in the league race. Yes, yeah. they did. All right, Wapak and Salina this week. Wapak's 5-0, 4-0 in conference play. Salina 3-2, 3-1. Bulldogs obviously need a win. Two teams that just really get it done defensively. Wapak has given up just 51 total points on the season. Salina has given up just 75 total points on the season. Both of them have been stellar defensively. When you think of the fact that uh, they, neither one throws the football very much, Wapak throws it just 15 times a game, Salina just 12 times a game. This game will go quick. It'll be a ground game. Whoever's defense really steps up and play has an advantage here in that particular game. When you look at who they have coming up, both of them have St. Mary's coming up, Salina next week, Wapak mm -hmm. in week nine. So this is a key game for both teams. Sure is. Let's go to the Northwest Conference, Crestview and Ada. Crestview four and one. Eight of three and two, both one and one in the conference. This is a battle of two really good quarterbacks. Drew Klein from Crestview, Seth Conley from Ada. Uh, Klein with the run pass, Conley mostly with the pass. They cannot, these teams cannot afford a second loss, and this is also big for playoff points. It's that time of year when that stuff really starts to come into focus. How many playoff points can I get? This will be huge for the winner of this game. Start looking ahead for playoff points about this time of year anyway. Well, let's look at our, our schedule of broadcast games coming up. First of all, we have Bluffton, who's 3-2. and two. They're 1-1 one and one in conference play against Delphus Jefferson, who's 4-1 and one and 2-0. And, oh. and Mark, I could have brought this up a little bit earlier. Last week against Paulding, Delphus Jefferson had four intercepted passes. Paulding only threw the ball eight times, and they intercepted half of them. They also had a fumble recovery that they picked up, too. So five turnovers created by that Delphus Jefferson defense. They've been very good that way all year long, and, and that's one of the reasons they're so successful there for Coach Summers. St. Henry and Minster, 3-2 and two for St. Henry, 2-1 and one in conference play. Minster, 2-3, and 0-3. Oh that's a pretty good football team to be 0-3 in conference play, and they're staring yeah, at it this they week. they got some tough ones coming up, too. They do. Uh, Kenton and Shawnee, 2-3 and three for Kenton, 2-2 two and two overall. Uh, in the conference play, Shawnee is 1-4, and 1-3, and, and then the game that I get to do with Sean Boley this week when they have Perry and USV matchup. That particular game, that looks like an offensive shootout all over the place. Both teams can score points. Both teams have put a lot of points on the board through the course of the season. Whoever's defense steps up and play, and what do you got there? Got our eyeglass. Got our eyeglass. Look at this, it's that light. Got a light, too. It's pretty cool. It's up behind us there. Oh, Magnifying yeah. glass. Oh, yeah. When you get old, you get one of these. Cheaters. Is that what yeah. they call those? Yeah. All right. Well, with another closer look has come to an end, 
Go out and watch the game this weekend. The weather should be nice and good again this weekend. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.